Okay, brother, let's continue on here. Now, um, let's talk about the the term backslider. You've heard that term, haven't you? Yes. Um, some people think that there's no such thing as a backslider. They think that if a person uh, is a Christian and then they end up uh, getting involved in sin and, and falling away from the Lord somehow, that they've lost their salvation. And other people say, no, that person's a Christian. They're simply a backslider. Okay, so let's, let's examine that question here right now. Let's use the uh, story of the prodigal son to okay. make this point. Now, I'm not going to have you read the whole thing, but uh, I'm sure you're very familiar with it. There was this rich man. He had two sons. And the younger son came to this fa- rich father one day and said, uh, I'd like my inheritance early. Could you give me my inheritance now? And he wanted to go off and uh, party with it. And the father agreed and gave him his money. And the son went off to a far land and he got in all kinds of trouble. You know, it says he was, you know, I guess, really party with prostitutes and drunkenness and who knows what else. And eventually his uh, money ran out and he was broke and far, far away and he needed to eat. So he, he got a job with another rich farmer and they had a pig pen. He, his job was working in the pig pen. He's pretty miserable. And he was very hungry. He was thinking, he's really regretting what he had done. It finally hit him. and um, Came to his senses. Yeah, he finally came to his senses and realized that, wow, I, I had it so good with my father. In my father's house, even the servants are treated better than I am now. The servants have better food than I have. The pigs are even better than me. So he was really... A change of mind? Yes, he had a change of mind. He, he repented. His mind changed and he regretted that he uh, was uh, had done what he'd done. And he made a plan that he was going to go back and you know basically ask his father for forgiveness mm-hmm. and that he would uh, uh, tell his father, I don't even deserve to be your son anymore, but if you just let me work in the house as a servant, you know, I'd be you know, very happy if you do allow me to do that at least. And, uh, of course, as he's coming back, the father saw his son coming from a distance, and he was so joyful to see his son returning. He ran out and greeted and greeted him and hugged him and said, Bring the robe. Bring a ring. Uh, kill the fatted calf. We're going to have a feast, a party celebrating. My son has returned to me. What grace. Yes. So, what we have to understand about that story is that is a picture of uh, God the Father being the rich the rich man is the father and that's God and he has a, his son which every person who becomes a Christian we're born again we become a child of God so it's a picture of a Christian who's a son you would be a son of God or child of God and he, you leave and you go off and do all the wrong things but the son never ceased being the man's son, right? Amen. Through all of that, he still was his son. That couldn't change. What love? Yeah. He was in the pig pen, but he didn't change into a pig. He was still a son, but just in the pig pen. So, uh, this is a good uh, lesson for all of us that uh, as a Christian, since the age of 19, have you ever gone off and gotten into the pig pen? I've backslided. Yes. Yeah. I have too. And uh, uh, but did you ever stop being a child of God? Never. No. So, um, but the son. The good thing about the son is that he re- he his mind changed. He repented. He understood what he did, had done was wrong. And uh, but the relationship, as far as father and son, never did change. It couldn't change. You can't change the. He was the man's son, and he, you can't change that. But the relationship was strained, or, or um, he was um, separated from his father. He left. So that's a good reminder for all Christians to, to know that uh, if you get born again, and you're a child of God, you can never stop being a child of God, even though you go off and get into the pig pen. Amen. Yeah. Now, we covered our, that verse in Hebrews. Could you read that again? And we did that in the last video. Yes. Uh let your conversation be without covetedness and be content with such things as ye have 
For He hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Now that's really, really good news there. Because that's telling me that uh, this father, he was never going to give up on his son and disown him. You know, he remained his son. And no matter what his son did, he would, the father would never forsake him or leave him. He, uh, it's kind of like, here's a perfect illustration of it here. Well, I want you to shake hands with me like the, the Romans did. Okay. I hope all the viewers can see this. See, Now, this, is, this type of handshake represents the kind of relationship that Frank has, in, in, in this case, if I was playing the part of Jesus here, and Frank is a child of God who's born again, uh, I've got a hold of him. That the Bible says Jesus has you in the palm of his hand. So Jesus has this grip on you. And let's say you get off involved in some kind of sin. See? See, you, you got separated from me, but I haven't let go of you. The Bible says he won't leave you, he won't forsake you. Okay? Let's say that you, you get repent, you come back, and uh, let's say years later, something really horrible. Your family's killed, your house burns down, everybody's gone, and you get angry with God, and you say you hate God, and your, your relationship is strained, but He's still got a hold of you. He'll never forsake you. And that's what I call good news. Amen. So then, uh, how did you put it uh, the other day when I talked to you about my salvation? Um, it's it's out of my hands. Yes, it's out of your hands. He's got a hold of you. No matter what you do, he's not going to let go of you. Your, yeah. your salvation is not based upon your righteousness. It's based upon the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And Amen. He will, he will never forsake you. Amen. That's good news. 